welcome to part two of our conversation in which we discuss successes and pitfalls of polyamorous relationships. If you haven't listened to part one yet, please do. It's where we unpack what polyamory is and isn't. We discuss what's so special about polyamory and explain the concept of compersion. In this part two, we dive deeper into mastering the art of loving many, talking about navigating jealousy, personal growth and healing through polyamory, and opening up a monogamous relationship. We are sipping on specially selected Castellone Ribolla Gialla from Audi, which some have described as sipping on sunshine. Ribolla Gialla is an ancient grape that is very versatile and can take many forms, just like polyamory. Pour yourself a generous glass, sit back, relax and hit play. Let's crack on. And now going back to what we've already started talking about, challenges. So I think I I probably will start, I will go back to the jealousy because we we know that this is one of the biggest challenges when you are in polyamorous relationships. How can we navigate jealousy in those those relationships? Yeah. (laughs) Um, I think this is a really interesting one. So I think I think you have to be willing to, um, and I talked about consciousness earlier, so have to be willing to look at your own patterns and your own awareness in what's what's happening with mm-hmm. jealousy. Mm-hmm. So where is it coming from? Where is it coming what's from? The, yes. what, what's the, what's the, the trigger? Root. What's the root of it? Mm-hmm. So very often I found for myself, and I'm not a hugely jealous person, but when I do get jealous, I find it's it's not really about him, as mm-hmm. in him mm-hmm. going off with someone else. Yeah. It's more about what's what's been missing for me. Have I felt like I have needed some attention that I didn't get, or have I felt that I didn't get mm-hmm. that hug, or did did I <clears throat> Did I need something mm-hmm. that I either hadn't asked for or wasn't given? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we have deep down needs that very often we express them quite interestingly mm-hmm. as like emotions, like a jealousy, mm-hmm. and it could be it could be other emotions. Mm-hmm. It could be like I'm depressed or I'm sad or whatever else. Mm-hmm. There are lots mm-hmm. of different emotions. People pick up jealousy quite a lot. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I think it's interesting, but I think this is I think this is true of a lot of emotion. It can yes. be re- can be emotional to be in a polyamorous relationship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so the first thing would be to identify why am I feeling jealous? Dig digging deep. What 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 mm. particular action is, is triggering that feeling in me? And as you say, maybe it's not about him. It's about me, him or her. It's about mm. me. And then, would you normally talk to your partner about this would you is that part of the honesty that we're talking about you would say listen this is what I'm feeling but I recognize Mm -hmm. that this is about me and I'm working through this and all that stuff so that's very beautifully put I love that I think this is about responsibility Mm -hmm. and being responsible for ourselves and our own feelings and emotions and our own needs and very often we we put it on our partner to fulfill all of our needs Yes, without actually, yes. actually even asking them. With, yes, which we've covered. I think we well, have covered. Couple, we have covered. <laughs> and, reading mind and all that and, stuff. And yeah. reading minds and mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. I think this is about okay. That self reflection piece. I think I do liken this to transformation, personal development. So I mm-hmm. think it works. If you've done any work on yourself, you'll probably recognise this. It's it's really looking at actually. What can I be responsible for? Mm-hmm. It might be actually that there's something that you can do about the situation. You, by meaning me, if that was my relationship. Mm-hmm. So I noticed recently, I'm just going to use my own example here. I've noticed mm-hmm. recently, I got upset with my partner over the weekend 
and two things were going on. So I got upset with him because I didn't feel like he was giving me enough attention. And when I looked at it, I realised there was two things going on. There was a deep core belief, which was Mm -hmm. that I don't believe my partner has a partner has ever chosen me. Oh, wow. Okay. And that's because my dad left when I was very young. Oh, so he goes and way back. He goes yeah. way back. And I tracked back it to back to actually yeah. my dad, my mum and my dad separated when I was like five years old. My mum didn't want my dad in his life and in, in the, our lives. So we didn't see him again till our 30s. Mm-hmm. But I wanted my dad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I knew what was happening, but at the same time, I wanted him and he didn't choose me. He didn't mm-hmm. choose to be with, stay mm-hmm. around. Mm-hmm. So that is a real core belief. That's my belief. But yes. it's also a, just a belief. It's not true. Right, yes. Now, I, that child, that child, that five-year-old child yeah. didn't know that. Mm-hmm. But I know that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there's, I can be responsible for the upset that I'm mm-hmm. feeling. There's nothing to do with my partner. Yes. He happens to have triggered just an old wound. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. From my childhood. And yes, I, I would always recommend communicating, but I would also check what you're communicating. Mm-hmm. Because it's quite easy to communicate, well, you upset me because you yeah. did this, yeah. you yeah. did, did mm-hmm. this. And yes. And that's not the kind of communication I'm talking about. The kind of communication I'm talking about is possibly an apology, if that's warranted. You know, Mm -hmm. I apologise for getting upset with you. I realise it wasn't about you. It was about Mm -hmm. my dad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. But actually what I really need right now is a hug because, I'm, you know, I'm feeling very vulnerable and sad about the fact that my dad never chose me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so those are the kinds of conversations that that can deal with jealousy and any other emotion you might be experiencing, mm-hmm. which is natural in any relationship. Yes. But I think possibly more extreme in, in polyamory because there's other partners involved yes, yeah, and, and more em- yeah. emotions can come up. Yeah, I think... I don't know, in inverted commas, you're more exposed to more hurt, technically, because mm. there are other partners. So maybe you're sort of, in a way, forced a bit more to work on those jealousy yeah. triggers and the other... Which is why I, just, I think it's a really beautiful thing to do, and that's why mm. I was talking about transformation earlier and, and, mm. and consciousness. It's a very healing thing to be in a polyamorous relationship, I oh, think. Wow. Oh, okay. That's the other way of putting transformational mm-hmm. and growing because it's because if you can mm-hmm. if you can face those upsets and deal with the source of it, mm-hmm. then you can let that go and that actually supports you to yes. heal and grow into mm-hmm. you know the more you know mm-hmm. more fuller version of yourself, however mm-hmm. you want to to express that and as you said polyamory is about loving relationships so i presume your partners will be there to support you where you let's say if we take the jealousy bit and you say i'm sorry i've overreacted it's actually has to do with something completely different my parents and and then they will support you through the process of of healing or personal growth Mm -hmm. because we're talking about love yeah, and encourage. And again, it, I do. I think it depends on the uh, what you, how you created that relationship yeah. to a degree. Okay. Right? So if you've got a partner that you just go to the cinema with or the theatre with, <laughs> they you might love them to bits, but they may not be good at the emotional support. Mm-hmm. So again, it comes back to not necessarily expecting all your partners to be able to do that. Match the uh, the level of the relationship to the level of what you share in. Well, to, to not match necessarily to what you expect or what you want. So, you know, I particularly have a partner who, who we honour that with each other. Mm-hmm. But if I was to have another partner that, was just more about the cinema. I might hold off from 
mm-hmm. or I might just share once I've got over it. Mm-hmm. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? I might do the pro- I might come home and you know go to my bed and hug my my teddy bear <laughs> <laughs> because that's about being responsible for this is my emotion it's not yes. theirs mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so if i've got if i'm with someone who's not necessarily good at that emotional support i would come home do that processing myself i might share with them at some point i might share yes. you know whatever you said upset me and you know this is the reason why but I would potentially Mm -hmm. do that work myself or Mm -hmm. with someone who another partner or with someone who I could do that emotional work with okay right beyond the jealousy what other challenges or risks there are for couples that are exploring polyamory in, or maybe if I flip this question around, how to prepare? How can you open this relationship up if, if, if when it is... hasn't been an open relationship? Yes, yes. So, so you come to both, and you and your partner come to a realization that we've grown enough. I've got needs you can't meet. You, you've got needs I can't meet, or whatever that is. And we when and we when we aware of this, and we're happy to why to to kind of cast the net a bit wider sort mm. of thing i don't i don't know if that makes sense yeah it anything does. like that up well there. i think yeah i mean i think this i think there is a there is a risk what i would say is communication for okay. me is is the key it really comes back to communicating mm. so if you're opening up a relationship that was monogamous mm-hmm. then you have to be really have clear communication about what you both want Mm -hmm. about and talk about things like the possibility of jealousy the possibility Mm -hmm. of scheduling they might not get as much of your time as they Mm. did have and and so they they could be upset and that's what Mm -hmm. I was thinking when Mm -hmm. I was talking about the pitfalls, the pitfalls could be that, and I've heard of couples that have opened up their relationship and then closed it again. Right, yeah. Because mm-hmm. it can be challenging. It can be. Ch- I was in a situation like that where my previous partner, we opened the relationship. Mm-hmm. I wanted it more than he did. He didn't right. really want our partners. Mm-hmm. He did eventually see, a, see someone, but it, did cause it did cause issues between us mm-hmm. because it caused one of, yeah there's that one of the pitfalls was we did it to try and spice up the relationship oh, to solve okay. problems within the relationship oh, okay. itself so that okay. is one big so kind pitfall. of like finding like a little patch to put on there yes on the problem okay so and that was definitely ours even though we should have known better because we're both coaches <laughs> it's funny when you get, yeah and so I think it was very much at that time a you know a patch over something mm-hmm. polyamory is a lifestyle it's a it's a it's a choice of how you live your life it's not just and I think this goes back to what's ethical non-monogamy versus polyamory polyamory ethical non-monogamy could be that you open the relationship up to have a threesome mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that could be one or two, one partner goes off and has a relationship on their own. It could be you bring someone into the relationship, such as have a threesome or a mm-hmm. foursome mm-hmm. or whatever, mm-hmm. or multiple partners, couples mm-hmm. swapping, all that sort of stuff oh, okay. is under that banner. Okay. Polyamory is sort of much more like I'm going to have another long term partner. Oh, no. mm-hmm. And it does need making space for. So, Mm -hmm. you know, you could get jealousy because you're suddenly not available for one partner as much Mm -hmm. as they used to be. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's not for everyone. It really Mm -hmm. isn't for everyone because you have to be willing to change and adapt. You have to be willing to communicate. You have to be willing to deal with any upsets. A lot of couples actually avoid Mm -hmm. confrontation. They avoid upsets. Yeah. You Mm -hmm. can't do that in polyamory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You have to be able to deal with upsets, like I said, Mm -hmm. and really deal with it in a way that 
is being you're being responsible for your upset they're being responsible for their mm-hmm. upset mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. otherwise it's just going to be a, a okay. couple's row that just yeah. ends up going Tangle. around in circles potentially yeah. yeah and so there is a lot of risks to certainly to opening up a relationship mm-hmm. i think there's and i'm not saying it can't be done there are lots of people out there doing it and doing it successfully mm-hmm. But there's probably more risk to it than if you started a relationship in that context, because you start a relation. If you start relationships with polyamory as a part of the relationship, then you both have a similar understanding right from mm-hmm. the start, rather than first being monogamous and yeah. then opening up. Yeah, and possibly a risk of not being on the same page as what yeah. you describe with your ex. And it could be that you know, and why I talk about upsets is because even if you talk about it, it could be you're both on the same page, but then one person's got a partner that suddenly they're really deeply in love with, and they're besotted with, and yeah. they talk about them all the time, and the other partner has to listen to it, <laughs> yeah. and it causes That's feelings true. that they weren't mm-hmm. expecting, and. So it, it's, yeah, as I said earlier, it's not the easiest path to be yeah, going down. Yeah, yeah, but it can be, as you've mentioned, very fulfilling. I don't remember the word that I used. That I think used. I healing. use joy and I'm happiness joking. and, yeah, definitely healing. healing. And very beautiful, but yeah. it's but you have to be willing to be able to do all that work yeah. that I've just been yeah. talking about. Yeah, yeah. And you've said polyamory is a lifestyle. Is there anything that leads a person to choose this lifestyle? Things such as, do you need a specific personality or is there like a trauma in in the past? Or is there, essentially what I'm trying to say in a very weird way is that is polyamory for everyone or does it require a specific personality or specific circumstances or or maybe as I said there was something in the past that basically leads that person to want that kind of lifestyle I as I said earlier I don't definitely don't think it's for everyone but you know it's still not very common to be polyamorous out there Mm. in the world mostly Still, probably 90%, I'm quoting a stat, I don't even know whether it's accurate, but probably 90% of the world is monogamous and Mm -hmm. it's not going to change drastically anytime Mm. soon. You know, and there are many many reasons why people are monogamous. You know, Mm. it's not just the fairy tale, it's religion, it's, you know, cultural beliefs mean that lots of people in a mm-hmm. monogamous relationship and will mm-hmm. probably never even consider and think it's weird to be polyamorous. Mm-hmm. As for the type of person, I can only share really from my experience. I think probably that's the best and the easiest because I don't think I can quote other people on that. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, I was always highly sexual. Mm-hmm. My two long-term relationships monogamous relationships the sex died within a couple of years which is quite common it's called the honeymoon phase and it very often a few years into a relationship the excitement and passion has died Uh and so it is quite common for sex life to dwindle but I was always more adventurous I wanted to go out and have multiple partners and I did I had lots of casual sex and Mm. got into kink and BDSM and all that sort of stuff so for me and I might have shared this in a previous podcast I can't remember but for me it was very much around the fact that on the one hand I loved all this adventure I loved meeting new partners and having Uh kinky sex on the other hand I wanted a partner I wanted to come home and Oh, I okay. cuddle up and have a nice, you know, be able to go for a picnic or do things together. Whereas this world was full of people that didn't want to commit, didn't want a relationship. Yes. Just happy fucking and enjoying <laughs> themselves. Yeah. Hedonistic type stuff. Mm-hmm. Whereas this world mm-hmm. is like full yeah. of sensible people who want to settle down, have kids and have a house and a car yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So I was very drawn to open relationships and polyamory because actually it sort of gave me the two things together. It gave me the the potential for having adventure and having 
different partners with different interests Mm -hmm. but having the love and the connection and the heart Mm -hmm. having the heart involved Uh okay that makes sense two in one okay yeah yeah and that might resonate with others. There might be different reasons. People, I think, probably yeah. go do polyamory for all sorts of different reasons. Mm-hmm. Okay. One question I wanted to ask before we we finish is, if if a person has multiple loving relationships, what if you have sex with those partners? You sharing bed with different with different with different people, and and I, I understand they fulfil you in different ways. So how can you be conscious and sexual and consciously sexual and intimate with so many different people while remaining authentic i think authentic's a really interesting one i think authentic comes back to communication Mm -hmm. to a degree but it also comes back to really being authentic with yourself and what you want and Mm -hmm. your desires Mm -hmm. One of the things that I'd like to bring in here, and I was thinking as you were saying that, was the the word being present. Okay, right. Very often in life we're not present. Mm -hmm. I think I said to you I had a partner which I lived with, I've had two partners where I live with, and very often we come home, we'll tell each other about our days, and we go and watch TV. Mm -hmm. it's not really being present with with one another Mm -hmm. being present with one another is like can you authentically give that person a hundred percent of your attention Mm -hmm. in this moment Mm -hmm. and a hundred percent of you in this moment now hundred percent is quite challenging because even highly spiritual people don't necessarily give a hundred percent present because we're Mm. always listening to that voice in our head yeah but the idea is that the more we're present and the more we're authentic Mm -hmm. and authentic is a state of being it's a state of who we are and it does got nothing to do with how many partners we are right yes okay it's got to do with how much are we pretending in life how much are we putting up with stuff in life how much are we not saying to our partner partner or partners Mm -hmm. what we desire what we want so many people i i work with they haven't told their partner what they want right yeah (laughs) or even don't and haven't told them for so long they don't even know what they They want anymore Mm -hmm. so this is very much about when i'm with this partner i'm Fully, fully present, with this yes. partner mm-hmm. and i tell you what that makes so much difference in life if you're like that in everywhere if you're in work with your family mm-hmm. if you're present so many of us are we're on our phones we're uh, thinking mm-hmm. about what we've got to do later the dinner the to-do mm-hmm. list mm-hmm. and and so when you're with multiple partners and you're giving a hundred percent yourself and yeah. they're giving 100% yourself, then you're met completely. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that is extraordinary. Yes. Mm-hmm. And and you can do that. It's a moment-by-moment moment thing. So it doesn't matter whether you're seeing one partner today and another partner tomorrow. It's the same thing because it's a different moment and you're mm-hmm. with that partner, whichever partner it is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're yeah. 100%. Now, that is strange. That is one of those things that is easier to say than do. I remember when I first started doing polyamory and it feeling strange that I was holding one partner's hand one day and then the next day I was holding a different partner's hand. And it does feel strange. It feels like, oh, my God, I shouldn't be doing this. This is weird. I'm walking around the road with someone different and I'm mugging and kissing this partner and Later on, I'm going to be hugging and kissing this button. Yeah. <laughs> so there is, there, and this is what I was talking about, about being in our mind. When we're thinking those thoughts, we're in our head and not being completely right. present. But it is not also something that I think isn't something we're used to. Yeah, so it takes some getting used to. That certainly was my experience. Okay, I don't know I whether see. other people would necessarily say okay. that but that right. certainly was was my experience yeah okay one of my questions was how to make sure that the 
all the partners that feel valued and respected by you essentially answer that question now with it 100% present, which I understand mm-hmm. if you are authentic and present, then they will naturally feel loved and respected and valued. Mm. If, if I think there is, there is yeah, and I think this brings up another interesting point that I'd I'd like to raise before we finish, which is it's also about all the partners. Mm-hmm. I love to think about it as an extended family. Now, okay. some some people will do polyamory and potentially not meet other partners. So oh. if I had two partners, my my partner might not meet my other two partners. Right, yes. Mm-hmm. And those two partners have family and maybe have kids and stuff like that. They may have other partners. Uh-huh. So you can see it's like a tree effect. Yes, yes, yes. And quite quickly it becomes quite big. Uh-huh. So... But there are other types of polyamorous relationships where you might meet the partners. Oh, okay. So I've met my partner's wife and I and his kids, mm-hmm. and we hang out and we do mm-hmm. things together, mm-hmm. and we're just friends. Mm-hmm. And some people, it might be that you're having a relationship with the whole of that partner. Right. Okay. All right. And it's just it has to do with the preference and again it nice has to do with what, what who you love what, what you who you fall happen. in love with that sort of thing so what i'd also want because i want to bring it into how do you respect all of that how do you respect mm-hmm. how do you work with the fact that i'm now in a relationship not just with my partner but with my partner's wife right. with my partner's kids mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. potentially i haven't met is the partner yet but I think that will happen at some point Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so with her and her newborn maybe okay right okay so so you're it's a lot of relationships now if you're in a polyamorous relationship you could choose not to have any interactions with all the other partners right but very often very often people want to Mm-hmm. They want to sort of have it more as a community feel, like right. you know, we could go f- to barbecue all together. We could yes. we could go to a birthday party together. Mm-hmm. We could we, we could all spend Christmas together. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so there's uh, how do you respect all of the people that are in that this this community? that's because you're in a relationship with this person and this person and they're in a relationship with that person and that person. So I see how it can actually get really complicated, maybe not complicated, complex, because you're not in a relationship with just one partner, but all of a sudden, as you said, with the whole family. Yeah. And and again, if you're doing polyamory, it's a choice about how much you get involved with all of that. Yes, okay. But it is... Whether you get involved with all of that or not, there is a respect and a having to work with the fact that yeah. that there are other people involved, there are kids involved, yeah. there are other partners, there's a baby involved in yeah. my case. There's, you know, and it is now... Well, you like a challenge, you said. <laughs> <laughs> I did say that. <laughs> and I think that's probably a nice note to, to finish on, unless you've got any more questions. No, no more, no more questions. Thank you so much. We've, uh, I'm not going to say we've exploited the topic, but we've, uh, <laughs> we've covered quite a lot, including things that I've, I haven't thought to ask or, or mm. you know, didn't know before before we meet before we met. So thank you so much for being here with me, answering my questions, drinking the wine with me, and uh, see you here in a couple of weeks. You're welcome. It's always a joy, and I'm enjoying the wine. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs>